So, um, a lot of these strolls and forums are recorded when the president is, you know, coming into their prime or way before, just trying to learn the ropes and things like that. This is not going to be one of those things. Hi, I'm a nerd president from 2022 to 2023 of the Classics Club. Markham Classics Club, Markham District Classics Club, and this one is about loss. I'm kidding, it's about moving on. kind of is about loss, but you know I had to say it. Anyways, um, I think moving on from a club like Classics, especially for a, someone in, who's been involved all four years like I have been involved deeply, is really hard. It's where you make a lot of your friends. Um, where you pour a lot of your, these well, like where you pour a lot of your life and your effort and your a lot of emotions into it, and suddenly there comes a day when you are looking at the exec of the future, looking at the club members of the future, and knowing that your club is in good hands, but also that you are becoming part of the past. And it may not even necessarily be it when you're graduating, like I am, because it is currently June. But there are some things that I, as someone who's been president for a year at this point, someone who's been in classics for all four years, would like you, the, the, uh, the listener, to know. And some things that I'll try to figure out over the course of this very recording, as is the nature of these podcasts. Kind of, um, kind of, you kind of pull some things out of some some places, so to speak. But I think when I've been reflecting on my time here, I think one of the main things is that in any club, not just classics, and not just when you're graduating or in your last year or whatever, in any club, I think it's important to create an identity for yourself. So over my course, over my time at the school, I've become the classic guy, apocryphal, I think. But that that's not, I don't think that's what made me who I am. I don't think, I mean, kind of, for my case, yes, it kind of did. But I don't think that's what made me necessarily have an effective presidency. Or it's not the thing that, that makes you have an effective career in high school or have a good time in high school. But it's more creating an identity for yourself that while changing, and of course everyone's nuanced and all those things, and no one's defined by a single thing, it's about creating an identity that people know they can rely upon when they're in need of help or in need of something like emotional support. So I become known as the classics guy, but I'm also like, I'm more than that. It helps define me, but it's not all of who I am. And it took me a long time to uh, learn about this, to learn about myself and learn how to become better. So I think one of the main things I would say to any people who are younger listening to this, or um, the, uh, the, I don't know, I think a lot of alumni listen to this too. So it's like, bro, maybe you know all this one, all this right, but to the younger people listening to this, maybe from the future of classics, um, one thing that is very important and that no one really can help you with other than yourself, is just learning how to be an optimized version of yourself. Like, learning how to be kind without being a pushover, and how to be, um, how to compete without being toxic, and things of that nature. It's just learning this balance. And I think one of the things that helped me develop my identity in the club is how to pull back some of my uh, very overzealous tendencies and direct them into actually accomplishing the po positive things rather than just like making the environment one of just overblown passion or anger or whatever. It is about making that balance and about directing passion and about doing those things. That's, that's what helped me. That's what helped me define my identity arc. But I am in grade. I'm ending grade twelve, so it's like, bro, if I spend four years in high school without learning anything, that would be kind of a goon squad move. But 
for the younger people, the younger people, at most I will be, if you are in high school listening to this, I will at most be three years older than you are right now at the time of this recording. So it's like, bro, I'm still young. I'm still kind of dumb. So don't, um, don't take my word for it entirely. But what I would suggest is, I would suggest looking into how you make other people feel like how it is to be around you how it is what other what your friends and your peers feel when they're around you of course this does come with the caveat of life is not about all about what other people think of you you it is completely okay to be yourself to do all of those things but you also don't want to go through life being self-absorbed and that's a lesson that came very hard to me, both in terms of being a leader in the Classics Club and just as a person in the Classics Club. So one of the things that's kind of informed my time as a like senior exec, VP, Prez, is that you, and also just as a person, is that leadership is very much... Um, learning how to properly interact and express, exp- like communicate with people, and knowing that knowing the difference between um, between being like no, okay, basically knowing when to be really hyped. Okay, I, I guess knowing what the difference between hype and overzealousness is, because overzealousness can help drive people away from you and it can help um, negatively affect your life when you're looking for things like leadership positions or um, when you're looking for friendship or whatever. Hype, if you keep it in check, hype is one of the things that actually gravitates people towards you. It it helps you make that identity and it helps you, in my case, hype is what helped me be myself. Hype is a a part of who I am, energy is a part of who I am. But there's also a, a, a con, like, For every good thing, there is obviously, when you take it too far, there is a negative consequence to it. And I think overzealousness and arrogance are part of the hype. If you're too chill, then you can lapse into being uncaring. And that's also something that you want. So you see, like, all these different things. So I would suggest, before you make the transition, before you make the jump to adulthood or into the older grades, that you start figuring out what are my best qualities... Are there any negative qualities that are that are mirroring it? Um, so in my case, it was I was hype energy. That's good, but then on the flip side, I was also kind of overconfident, arrogant, um, and I didn't really know how to communicate that hype. So I used um, so I was very I don't know not the word for it exactly is, but I I was let's say I was overzealous, right? Like, classics was the be-all, end-all, when it shouldn't have been, even though it's important. It like it's Learning how to c- connect with other people whose classics wasn't as important to, and trying to make, trying to te- um, trying to get them to appreciate classics as much as I have, was only successful after I figured out how to get to them on their grounds, is that instead of trying to project my own worldview onto them off the bat. So... There is that. So I think I think the, my first lesson, my first step in this stroll would be to tell all of you that it is important to figure out what your best qualities are and to try to work on what their flip side, the reverse, the reversed, um, they're the other side of the coin for them, so to speak, and try to work on improving those aspects of your personalities because I'm sure all of you are great and but but what I have learned is that everyone has flaws and it never hurts to take a look at yourself and figure out what's helping you what's hurting you and what will help make your life better and your friends and your peers lives better but I will also say flaws another thing I've learned is I guess lesson number two is that your flaws aren't always bad this is kind of a contradiction, but sometimes flaws 
help humanize your flaws. Your flaws, you don't, there's a difference between a flaw that's causing active hurt and the flaw that's like funny. And that helps humanize you. That helps you bring bring you closer to the people around you. If you're going to see your exec, flaws actually sometimes help um, make you approachable. Like you don't have to be the kind of leader, the kind of senior that's closed off from the world. I mean, obviously, see, everything I say has an element of vacillation to it. There is always a little metronome swing this way, swing that way, and you try to find the center all the time. You're not always going to work, find it because that's what being human is. Like the person who finds that metronome, like the center, is like has has achieved um, any number of enlightened states from Buddhism and Hinduism and, and Christianity and Islam and like, bro. That is basically the enlightened state that all religious meditations are striving towards. Is just finding that metronome stuck in the exact right spot in the exact middle. But a lot of this is preface, yeah, so a lot of this is vacillation, but there is also something that, an element to the fact that sometimes flaws help do, do help humanize you. And there are, like, there's a difference, but, and, but the knowing when to express those flaws is another thing. So, like, knowing... Okay, so here, here's the thing. Um, you can't... It is important that the flaw is not expressed so often that you start losing respect. You start losing, um, you start losing yourself to the flaw because you keep doing it over and over again without knowing when the right time is to release it and when the right time is to keep it in check and all those things. And, but sometimes it's fine to reveal a part of yourself to your friends, or if you're in senior exec, a part of yourself to your younger members of the club, your, the people who look to you, because that helps tell them that you're just like them, in a sense, that while you may have more experience than them, that they're still someone um, that they can come to you for help with their own issues, because um, you have de you are dealing with some of the same issues, and conversely, it also helps bring the you closer with them because now they know that um, like now you're better friends because you have a shared experience of some kind of some kind of failing. Essentially, no, 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 not failing, not failing. It's a bad word. Um, yeah, again, what was it? Giannis and Kobe and all them says failure does not exist. You think, in, yeah, no, and also Michael Jordan, my guy, but, um, yeah, it's not another feeling. It's like, it can help bring you closer, because now it's like, haha, look, I have to keep my, the younger grades, it's like, haha, look, sometimes I get to keep, I get to help my, um, my older grade person deal, my senior deal with some things Yay, I am, I can, and it helps, and also, that also helps them learn to deal with their own friends and their own, at their own age level. Or if you're just dealing with their friends, and it's like, yeah, okay, we're your friends, you know, sharing, be, making mistakes is part of what's, what brings friendship closer together. But then also as a leader, you can't just go around and be like, haha, I'm flawed all the time. I can't deal with anything because I am too given into these flaws. No. So my yardstick for this is that in low in like lower scale situations it's fine to make it's fine to um it's fine to be a little you know lower strung because it's like haha my flaw that i do some i made a mistake haha wow it's funny i will not make this mistake, mistake again i'll try not to but it's still like haha yeah in high stick situations you have to be the rock for the club if you're in leadership or for your friends, if you're in a lower grade, it's like you have to be the um, the person that they can look to and be like, yay, I know this person has got my back. Um, unless, of course, you, someone else has to be your rock because it's your, that's a whole other thing. But like, let's say that you're a leader, like you're a senior exec and you listen to this and you're like, yeah, the club is in a high stress situation. Now it's the time where I have to lock down, you know, get lock in um, and be there for the club. 
and you know sacrifice some of my own and like be be more self-controlled and pay closer attention to my actions than i usually do because if i make a mistake then that would be bad for the club as a, as a, as a whole so in that time it's not funny it's not funny because there there's real stakes to it and acting as you normally would to just bring bond people together with humor or like or just um humanize yourself no that's not the time to do all those things that is a time to transcend what you think you're as possible you know like for a brief moment become superhuman become more than you are and um I think that's an that's an important contrast that I learned too late. I only learned in my, you know, the waning months, the waning year of my high school years is that there is a very very important distinction between the leader you are in peacetime and the leader you are in and this is high school, this isn't really a war is going on in Canada, but and the leader you are when the stakes are high. Right? And the third thing um this has been pretty rambling but I guess all of these are like them shout out Simon Wokin the previous um the the previous connoisseur we are people because somehow they were articulate and I don't feel like I am <laughs> so um the third thing is 12th grade yeah okay I'll just talk about 12th grade 12th grade is was basically I think probably the best year of my high school career so far um i will be extremely happy if all of you have the same level of camaraderie with your fellow grade 12s and with your with your classes club experience with your club experience is not even classics specifically as you as i have had in grade 12 because there's there's an element about the fact that you're all leaving that bonds people that brings people closer together i made a lot of new friends in 12th grade I didn't have I became closer with some of my old friends all those things um so 12th grade my advice to the younger grades listening to this by the time 12th grade hits I hope you have found something that is as hard to leave as classics is for me I hope that you know that you're great and that we 12th graders miss the juniors very much when we're all leaving and that we hope you have a great time and that you have found something that is as exhilarating and as toilsome and as great and as very very hard sometimes and as cool and as sucky and as all around best time of your life best club experiences as I don't know for the beginning of sentence I hope you found something that's as both as good and as hard as classics has been because that's where the, that's where life is made. That's how you learn things, that's how you care about things. It is really truly honestly better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all because that is where life is made. And I hope that all of you find something that you love as much in high school that is as hard to leave behind. as we have found as i have found classics to be and for the 12th graders this is my last this is my advice to you enjoy it enjoy the year at the beginning of the year you are still young you are still you have a whole year to look forward to and it is i it is a long year i would say i mean people say the 12th grade 12th grade goes by really fast but honestly i think i had enough good experiences and enough like time and enough all those things to make it feel like it's been it's been a year yeah, it was a really good year it was a really great year but now it's time to go and i honestly i don't know how to feel about that but what i do know is i have we have built together here in this year something that i am very proud of something that i hope and some something that i hope i've left a piece of myself behind in that the future generations will carry forward just as i had to carry forward my great twelves and my seniors uh legacies forwards with me and with my my senior exec so yeah just basically find something that 
you love because that will help make your identity before you have to go move on. And yeah, I mean, the very concept of moving on itself is kind of basically it's like this, like you only really know what something means to you and you have to leave it behind, right? It's um, in classics, classics was my life. But now I am going, and we are going, on to bigger things. So, enjoy your time. Enjoy your classic experience. Make classics your own was the eternal slogan of Sam and Joaquin. And they were spitting absolute fire when they were saying that. So, with that in mind, always remember that... Your experience is yours, and that classics will hopefully be there for you, and that we are all very, very proud of the person you are becoming. Or, yeah. So, with that in mind, or person or people, because you know classics is a people also. It's like a it's like a group of pers people that makes a singular people like a, a group. Anyways, this has been President Aneard in my last or one of my last um sp speeches, written odd verbal communications to the club. And this is President Aneard signing off. President Anirid signing. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna reenunciate that. This is President Anirid signing off. Very cool. All right. All right.